We've got 29,000 subscribers at the moment. If you want to be part of that and add to that number, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Hi everyone, welcome, Ryan here. How's it all going? Today we are making drawers um, and I thought it was a perfect opportunity to show you how we do things. Um, so if that interests you, floats your boat, but stay tuned, watch the end, and I hope you enjoy. Right, so the process that we use um, most of the time is a rebate in the bottom of all the components. As you can see here, this is the underside. It would be like that, obviously. Um, we put a rebate in to house the bottom of the drawer. So, as you can see, the 6mm sits in there nicely. And we leave a little lip. So, as you can see, just the side is just proud by about a mil. So when we run our pin gun um, along there, it's got something to ride up against. So what I meant is this was slightly higher than the bottom so the pin gun can run along that ridge. It just makes, um, makes sense, makes it a little bit quicker. So that rebate is about 7mm deep. We have a 6mm tongue and at the moment we're using um, this route table to do our, our rebating. So if you want to see how we do that, just have a look at the video up above. It's quite an interesting video. We used to use the table saw to do the rebates. Um, we just used to do the probably method that most people do. Run it one way, run it the other way, and the corner falls out. But that machine is so much better and quicker, and no dust. So going back to the method, we're using the rebate, just so you don't see that bottom all the way around the drawer. Um, we get a nice glue surface area on that rebate too. Um, we can pin and we can glue it, and we can reinforce with some screws. So, um, yeah, as you can see, Sean, the cameraman, has already been working his magic. Um, he likes to do one corner first. So, Sean, if you want to say anything, you are filming at the end of the day. Can you see, he's just done one corner at a time. Um, he likes to do a whole bulk at a time instead of doing one, moving the tool, moving the tool. Going on to the next one. The best way is to do everything as many in one hit because you're picking up the tools as little as possible, aren't you? So if you're doing 10, you're setting up 10, you're doing all the gluing on 10, you're doing all the pinning on 10, and it just minimizes how many moves you're gonna do um, and how many times you're picking up your tools. And he's using these little clamps. This one's already pinned and glued, isn't it, Sean? Yeah. All right, so I can take that out now. So these little corner um, clamps, very cheap off Amazon. I can leave a link if you like. Um, you like them? Sure. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. They hold the corner. Yeah, they're pretty tight, aren't they, for the springs? Yeah. I'm not trying to be a salesman here, but that is like, if you wanted to do some exercises on your farm, look. <laughs> or you could get your... Oh, yeah. Anyway, stop being stupid. Um, so that holds the corner in nice. Um, and then you can fill around the corner. So once you've got your glue bead, let's move that around for you. So the method is, we do one corner first to hold itself together. Um, there'll be a glue bead in there, a nice decent amount of glue. We just use a nice quality PVA. I don't suppose it really matters what one you use, but just don't use a cheap, no name nonsense, no screw fix brand or whatever. In there, and then once it's clamped together, we know it's square, we can get square in that corner if we want to, on the outside, and then three pins, 50 mils? Yeah, 50, 50 mils. Mil. Still go for the 50 mils. Remember, wear your goggles when you're doing this. And then Sean simply just does that on every corner, as you can see. Boom, 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 all along. It's even using that space over there. If you wanted to, you could use this whole bench because we've got a 3.6 meter by 1.6 bench. Probably getting another four or five in there. But if you wanted to use the table saw, you know, don't use that space so we can still use the table saw and do bits. So once you've got to that stage. Well, once I've got to this, eh? Yeah, so how far have you got so far? You've only done these three? Or um, are they all done? I've, done? I've pinned them all now. Okay, I'll cool, they're all pinned. And then I'll, come, I'll go back again. Yeah. So I'm not going back myself. I do, I do one, one. Yeah. I do another side. All the way around. All the yeah. way around. And then I'll come back and, and do, do the other the, side. Yeah, so you then once you do that, because you can get to the side here, yeah. you're obviously pinning from this side. You can see the pinholes. Yeah. You're going to do the same there. Yeah, same there. All the way around. All the way around again, then come back and then do the 
front, uh, front or back. Yeah, whatever you class it as the front then, or the back. And then once I've come back this end, I'll flip all of them over, I'll put the bottoms, bottom, on. Put the bo bottoms on. Yeah, yeah. So when you are doing the back or the front, whatever you want to class the front or the back because they're universal, do you spin them around because you're going to have a, like a U shape in a minute. Once yeah. you've done that, that and that, you're going to have a U shape. You're going to yeah. spin it around. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I normally put them, I probably normally put this one as a side run in front and I put it on the face. Well, show, do you want to show them quickly? Do you want to show them? So one, once, it, once that's, on yeah. the, once another one's there, yeah. I put that like that. Makes life so much easier, 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 doesn't it? Just rest it on the top. Rest it on the top with two glue. Yeah, and then you don't glue. necessarily have to clamp it. No, I don't clamp it either. No, no. My last no. fourth piece. Yeah, that's quite, and then, that's quite and a good then, tip. And then once it's a box, yep. I do that. Yeah. And then all, I put all the bottoms in, glue, glue bead, glue in a, bottoms in. Yeah, so when you are doing the um, bottoms, imagine this was all done. Um, do you just glue and pin one at a time? Yeah, glue, glue, pin, pin, one at a time, yeah. glue, pin, glue, pin. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so once you've done all of that, so yeah, you've effectively... put all the bottoms in. Yeah. So once you've done that and you've got to that stage, because you know we like to reinforce with screws as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll do that. We well. don't just rely on glue and pins because if yeah. you gave that bottom a good whack from underneath when you're loading, you can still break that pin and glue joint, can't you? Yeah, just use, use um, 430s. Yeah, let's see the sticker. Yeah, we don't go for anything fancy. It's just a 430 screw, 30 mil awesome. long. Yeah, and we just put one in every corner. So yeah. one, one, yeah. one. One. And if the drawer is bigger, obviously we put one in the middle. Yeah. Sides. Yep. So six on anything bigger than maybe two foot long. Yeah. Um, and it's an indestructible method, really, isn't it? How long have we been using this method for? Well, since you've been working with me. Yeah. yeah and I've been doing that. You've been here five years. Yeah. And I've been doing it this way for, you know, God knows how long. And remember, we do put fascias on front of these. So whatever the front or the back is, these might not necessarily have fascias. Yeah. Are these fascia ones or are these seen? Yeah, yeah, these are fascia ones. Yeah, so I this mean, is the actual front then, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is the front. This so, is the front. So there'll be a fascia that covers that end grain here. And we pre-drill for the to screw it from the inside the fascia. Off. Yeah, so if this was the front of the drawer, peeps, um, then Sean would be putting a three mil hole, three mil, three mil, three mil, to be able to screw that face room from the yeah, back using again, 30s, yeah, 30s again, yeah. same screws yeah. if it's longer again he'd probably put another two, another two in the middle, yeah. yeah um also um talk about the filling as well because when you're making these drawers when do you start filling all the holes because effectively this is the side of the drawer yeah remember we designed it this way so when the fascia goes on it covers the end grain and yeah. all you see is the pinholes yeah. so then as you can see, we've got this um, jointing compound, and we've been using this for a while now. When we do our um, treating MDF edges, we use this because it's a big amount of ready mix filler. It's perfect filler, really. It's a jointing filler, but it's effectively a filler. And you'll be just filling the holes as you go? Yeah, I'll fill them as I go, yeah. So, okay, so you're getting all the corners done? Yeah, get all the corners done. And, and then, you get all the, then you get one more done yeah. after, all the way around as a batch? Yeah. Then you go back and you do the last component, and then you go around and do all the bottoms as a batch. Yeah, I do all the bottoms, and then and then I fill them. And then you fill them, and then, and then I fit them back over and start free drilling for the faces and the uh, draw runners. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. So draw runners too. So Sean will have a place or a rod where all because we use side mounted draw runners where we need to pre drill those holes. Yeah. With a three mil drill bit, not drilling too deep. Um. Anything else? Uh, what about the underside? We used to say that this is this is a seen edge here. So remember, um, when the drawer bottom goes in, this drawer's upside down. But this edge is effectively seen within the drawer, isn't it? This corner. Yeah. We used to treat it like this. Can you see this little um, round over? Do you want to show that um, chamfer plane, Sean? All right. So we usually treat um, everything basically, whatever we're doing here. We take the aris off of all the components with a little tiny 1.5 mil round over cutter. Either that trimmer up there with a round over cutter, or but recently we've been using this. I'll leave a link to that as well. Sean, how do you find these? I think they're, I think they're really good. No noise. Yep. No, not, not, <clears throat> not dust, just a coil of MDF really. Yeah, yeah, literally. It's just like a little spiral of MDF yeah, that comes off. And it look at that nice crisp round over 
with you're not filling the workshop full of dust with that trimmer it's everywhere isn't it yeah, it's everywhere. You, no yeah no extraction even yeah. if you tried you can well, suck out the dust dust, dust free really yeah just... yeah so so what i was trying to get to um is because this is a seam corner from the inside once you put the drawer in if you are spraying or painting well if you are spraying I get Sean to turn this upside down. Imagine this drawer is done, okay? Let's see the inside of that drawer. If you are seeing the drawer from the inside, you see this little corner here. We used to put this Aris on um, using this on this edge here, but we don't anymore. We leave it sharp and then we just use a bit of P240 yeah. just to swipe that sharp corner off. Um, and why is that, Sean? Why tell the folks so you, why we so do it? So you get a better crisp joint there. There's no um, round. There's no uh, gap at the bottom. Yep. And it's mainly because when we spray, isn't it? Because when we spray our three coats, because we spray the drawer as a whole drawer, don't we? Um, it generally doesn't get into there, does it? Sometimes it connects the paint and sometimes it doesn't and it looks like there's a gap. Yeah. So by just taking a sharp arrow off, by the time we put that bottom on, it's a nice crisp joint and yeah, we can same, get that paint flowing. There as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the scene edge. But everything else that you can see, Sean has... See if we get an edge. We put that nice round. So it's planned what gets this treatment and what gets a bit of P240 treatment. Um, anything else that we want to talk about, really? Um, if we are drilling, we'll use a three mil drill bit. Yeah. Um, if we're filling, we'll use this compound filler. Um, we use side mounted draw runners most yeah. of the time. Um, GTV, we just find they're there. We've been using those for a while and we've never really had one that's broken. And they work very well, got no reason to change, unless the customer wants or specifies something different. Um, glue, showed you the glue, these little clamps are fantastic. And as you can see the method, it's just one corner at a time, just to hold it in place. And then it just gets easier from there. Yeah. Um, anything else before I disappear? That's the, that's the difference compared to the trimmer. Oh, look, let's have a look. <laughs> so that's what comes off. Oh, that's cool. With that, apart from, I mean, with the trimmer, the trimmer up there, goes through, it goes everywhere. yeah, you'd have to use your mask. Whereas if we if we're using that, Sean, you won't be using a mask in here, will you? If you haven't done any dusty work in here, you probably wouldn't have your mask on. No, it, because pff, it's just solid. There's no dust coming off of that. Yeah, where is where is this? Yeah, let's have a look at that cutter. Yeah, it's a tiny, tiny little round over. Yeah. We, I mean, by all means, use them. We still like it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a great, along with that Katsu router, and that's been still going for a couple of years. A cheap thing. Um, but apart from that, it's, it's going great. Um, ah, I just wanted to say, what do you use to put the pins in? I I'm going to get the... Airless uh, pin gun. Airless? No, not airless. <laughs> that's my sprayer. Air compressor. Air compressor. Air compressor. This thing, I know I, we sound like salesmen, don't we, Sean? Um, but this thing is unreal, okay? We've got a compressor in here. No, how quiet is Oh my up? God, watch the video I'm gonna put up right now. This isn't clickbait by any chance, by, by any stretch. Um, this thing is, it's like, you can't even hear it, can you? It's the dogs. It's the dogs, <laughs> It's fantastic and you can get different sizes and I've made a video on that as well. Um, we've just got an old gun that pumps out 50 mil brads, 30 mil brads. Um, oh yeah, so to pin this on, we didn't talk about the pins for the rebate for the bottoms underneath. So when you are, we are pinning the bottoms from underneath, you use 30s, yeah, don't so you? Yeah, you use 30s. Let's show, the, show, them the box, show them the box, maybe. All right, so there's different sizes. There's 30s and 50s. Maybe. Let's have a look at this. 50s in there. Yeah. And then 30s for the bottom. Yeah. Okay, these ones here. Those, yeah. Tack wise, screw fix job, isn't it? What are they? 18 gauge? Yeah, yeah 18 G. Yeah. Cool. And they work well. Any Brad nailer that you get for a compressor will do the job. Um, so we talked about the glue, we talked about the clamps, we talked about the pins, the filler, sanding up. You completed all the components first, didn't you? So you literally yeah, did the whole the batch. batch room, yeah. And I yes, the so all these are ready now. Yeah. So Sean spent a few hours doing, how many pieces were there? 100 something. 100 something for these 26 drawers that we're making. So Sean's gone over, aris, de arising them, swiping them, yeah. sanding the faces, getting them ready. And then once you've made the draw, it's finished. Yeah. And it's ready to dust down and just head down in that spray room. Yeah. 
Well done, Sean. Thanks for telling everyone. Um, if anyone found that helpful, um, just leave a little comment for Sean. He's doing absolutely fantastic in here. And um, we always get good comments from Sean. He's, he is literally the pinnacle of what you want working for you, basically. Right, so Sean's got to this stage, and you can see the fronts and the backs and the sides are all put together on this batch. And rebates up, and you can just see the way the bottoms sit within. Nice and simple. Looking good. Oh, just one quick thing, uh, we have got a membership. So if you feel like we are helping you and you like us and you like following us, like listening to the banter, um, feel free to subscribe and join our membership. Uh, anything that you donate or anything that monetary you put towards the channel will go towards new things, buy new things to make new videos. Remember, we've got 29,000 subscribers at the moment. If you want to be part of that and add to that number, feel free to hit that subscribe button, like, share, leave a comment. I try to always reply to you guys on the comments. Do you want to say goodbye? Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a nice time. Love you. <laughs> <laughs>